in the verifier, we need to make a lot of guarantees to ensure that memory is accessed very safely. Um, and so that's kind of the idea behind uh, dynamic pointers in BPF. Um, and so this is kind of similar to fat pointers or smart pointers and other languages where essentially um, you have your, uh, the data that it's pointing to, but alongside that data, you have some other metadata that you can use to, in this case in BPF, um, enforce certain things that you're not accessing beyond your memory range or that you're not trying to write into something that is read only. Um, and so underneath, uh, this is kind of uh, the structure of how it's defined uh, at the pointer in BPF is you have some data that you're pointing to, some size that tracks um, the size of the data you're, you want to interact with, your offset into the data. Um, and we currently use uh, the first, I believe, eight upper bits of size to keep track of some other things like uh, if it's read only, uh, what kind of dim pointer it is. Um, and so, yeah, so um, kind of some use case applications of this uh, is, uh, I think the first thing uh, that will probably be used most, mostly for is like, uh, we're able to now do dynamic memory allocations. Uh, so we can do, I guess, the equivalent of like malloc within BPF. Um, and we're able to kind of keep track in the verifier that it will always be freed by the end of the program so that uh, no memory gets leaked. Um, and alongside that, you're able to persist these dynamic memory allocations uh, in BPF maps so that you can use that across programs and um, be able to uh, use it that way. Um, kind of another use case is, uh, which I think, um, some people asked about, I think, last year for ring buffers is a way to um, have dynamically sized ring buffer reservations. And so we're currently able to do that in BPF right now, but that requires an extra uh, memory copy. And so kind of through this interface, you're able to do that um, without incurring an extra cost. Um, and so another application is also parsing like SK buff or XTP data more dynamically and ergonomically. Like I think right now, um, you have to add a bunch of these if checks to make sure you're not writing past the data end. Um, and uh, through dynamic pointers, you can kind of use like an iterator-like interface where you just iterate through your data um, and access it um, through that. And then uh, also like dynamically sized strings. Um, uh, without, instead of having it being statically known at compile time, you're able to just specify it, whether it's like through a, um, the user space application uh, dictating like the sizes. Um, so some example use case APIs right now. Um, the first kind of batch of patches um, is currently upstream. And that kind of adds uh, the most basic kind of dim pointer, which is like a malloc dim pointer. Um, and as well as adds like the, the things you kind of need to do in the verifier to keep track of all the state and ensure that nothing really goes wrong. Um, and so in the next series of patch sets, uh, we'll be kind of be adding onto that idea and kind of adding more of the functionality and like helpers to work with this. Um, but yeah, so like for mallocs, um, you're able to uh, use like BPF, DIN pointer, alloc to kind of dynamically allocate um, a, whichever size memory uh, you wish to. Um, and the verifier kind of enforces that before your program ends, there always needs to be a DIN pointer put, which is essentially uh, the equivalent of like a free. Uh, can I ask an API question? Yeah, of oh, course. Okay, cool. Um, could we, you know, maybe not in your first version or something, but could we put the memory in a map and then skip the put? So if you put it in a map, um, so yes, you are able to put it in a map, and then, uh, so when you put it in a map, that acquires another, like I guess, reference count. So mm -hmm. in your BPF program, you would still need to call a put. Oh, you would still call a um, put, but it would, it would still be in the Yeah, map. essentially the way it works is that cool. um, with a malloc, we'll reserve a few extra bytes in the beginning of the allocation mm -hmm. to kind of keep track of like the ref counting. Awesome, I think I remember talking about malloc years ago, so. Awesome, go. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, and then for like ring buffer, um, it's kind of like very similar to um, the current ring buffer APIs we have, which is like ring buff reserve, then pointer, ring buff submit, then pointer, um, and kind of the same uh, underlying idea behind ring buffer um, follows, as well as like to uh, whenever you reserve a certain record, you always need to call submit or discard on it, kind of like what you currently do um, with ring buffers. Um, and with, like with packet parsing, you're able to get a DIM pointer into that specific uh, XDP or SK buff data and then kind of iterate it through um, like an iterator. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's kind of uh, what I wanted to bring up for discussion. Is there anything people want to talk about? <laughs> One very important like part of this uh, DIN pointer API that's not on the slide is how do you actually convert DIN pointer to a direct memory access? Can you touch on that? Yeah. Um, so are you talking about the case where like um, you like a user space wants to read into some specific? Uh, so like with reserve, right? Like with, with normal reserve, PPF ring buff reserve, you're saying like I want hundred bytes from oh, ring yeah, buff, yeah, okay, and yeah, then you just saying. work with hundred. Yeah. Bytes. Um, so we're also able to get um, a direct data slice into that. And essentially, uh, in order to do that, you kind of have to know what size data that you want to access. So if it's like, oh, I want to access like 50 bytes of this, um, you can call something like BPF, I think it's called BPF um, data from mem, uh, where you pass in your DIN pointer, and it'll give you a direct access to that specific part of memory that you want. So you're able to just directly um, access that, directly read, write, mem copy, whatever you want to do into it, um, just like a normal buffer. Um, and the reason it has to be statically known is so that in the verifier you can kind of enforce that you're not trying to access something that's like outside of the memory range that you wanted. Um. <laughs> so, so with the map, the map use case, right? You'll, you'll allocate and then you'll push it into a map but yes. then how do you know, without a runtime check, how do you, when you read it back out, how do you check the size? How do you check the size? So, so like, yeah, does I think the I map see what you're require saying. the size to be part of the map specification? Or if, it, if it's just sort of a generic map of pointers, dynamic pointers, so then you load them in, then you'll read them in, read them out, mm -hmm. and then you'll try to do, like, read some offset into that, yeah. right? So how do you do that without a runtime check? Do you mean? There is a runtime check. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. I I also have a question regarding the packet parsing. Yeah. So, do do we have a helper yet where we can also say I want to um, have a DIN pointer for a given offset for a given size or so when you have a dynamic offset which mm -hmm. is which a verifier might not be understand at verification time. Mm -hmm. Sorry, was your so question? for example, like the I, mm -hmm. for like for, for example, IPv6 extension header parsing, right? Mm -hmm. So. It, so that's the DIN pointer advanced, basically. Like you can say like advanced by X amount of bytes, where X doesn't have to be statically known. Okay. Because like all like basically. And then. All the checks for us. Sorry. We can edit this from the YouTube. <laughs> So I think the, the what 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 was nice and we discussed this on the list would be the user like we 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 could have a PPF ten pointer right users uh, uh, helper as well that would avoid the extra copy sometime with the BPF probe read user into mm -hmm. that yeah uh, but this is super cool thank you awesome cool thanks Dave <laughs> uh, you mentioned that. If we put a DIN pointer into a map, mm -hmm. the ref count will be incremented and decremented automatically. Things will just work. Yeah. Uh, what happens if I put a struct that contains a DIN pointer into the map? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So uh, I believe you currently do that for spin locks and timers. So um, you're able to put a DIN pointer inside a struct um, and access it uh, within the struct um, as a map value. And is this in the last slide? Do you have an example how it would look, uh, API will look uh, when DIN pointer is part of the map? 
Um, no, yeah, this is the last slide. <laughs> okay. Yeah. For, for packet parsing, can you use that? I would assume you can use it interchangeably, right? Uh, where you later on use the, also like the old way of getting a range for parsing packet, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And as far as like SKB from SKB and XDB, do we need the context there? Can it be like one helper that gets like data, data in? Mm -hmm. Is there a difference for us? So it's because of the multi yeah. multi buffer stuff. But multi buffer we cannot do anyway. If you pass data, you don't know where the end is. What do you mean pass data? Both, yeah, data and data in, like two pointers. I guess, I guess a related question. On the SKB stuff, how do you handle frags? Like, yeah. do you have to walk the frag somehow or? or? Yeah, so I was kind of thinking of, so inside uh, you're able to track like which type of thin pointer it is. So if it's like a one that needs to be like uh, paged in, um, it'll do that for you, I guess, automatically where it sees, oh, you're trying to access uh, but, beyond it. Yeah, yeah, so like an SKB could have mm -hmm. chained SKBs essentially, yeah, right? And and. Like it's all one. It, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to understand is, mm -hmm. I guess, the the program would say, "Here's an SKB, here's my pointer," and then if it wanted to get the next SKB, you would have to walk that chain somehow. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how this would work from like TC and stuff, right? Like, where I think you probably have to linearize it because it can be shared. Yeah, but that's no it's good, right? Like that's, that's you might as well not even. We don't want to. That's going to be a huge performance hit. You would. That, that's Actually, return you like each segment as another thin pointer, it's just like locally created for you, right? So like you have a callback, and you pass like each segment of multi buff as like a separate thin pointer. You work with it like it's linear, and like how you process it, it's up to you, right? So like, you have to get out parts of the file. But then every load would have to be checked, right? Because you wouldn't know what data it was actually pointing at. Am I making making any sense? Like if it's it's basically a scatter gather list, right? Like simplify it to that. You have a scatter gather list. How do you do a dynamic pointer over a scatter gather list? And mm -hmm. either either this API only works with one entry in the scatter gather list and it's up the BPF program to sort of walk the scatter gather list and do a dynamic, mm -hmm. which to me makes the most sense, I think. I guess the other way that we tried to do with the um, which we do with like sock map scatter gather list from user space, the SK message stuff, is the user can read anywhere, and then kind of under the under the covers of the API, it figures out it does that walk for you and finds it, which I think is actually probably not the best way. How do you deal with like when you need to read some data that crosses boundaries? But that you copy, right? Then we but copy it and return yeah. it back. So like it optimize. It says, okay, we'll do the optimal case, unless we can't because it crosses. Yeah, and then it's and then it shoves it in the scatter gather list as an entry in the list. So it basically reallocates a, a chunk of the scatter gather list and puts it in. So, but I think for, uh, so basically, like internally, we actually know what kind of DIN pointer it is, right? So we can have special operations for special kinds of DIN pointer. So like SKB can be a special kind of DIN pointer. And then we can add like another API that like linearizes part of the packet, like or like entire packet. Like you can specify like from offset hundred like next 200 bytes, right? And yeah. you just copy it into another DIN pointer or into like so the buffer or whatever, that's right? That's the so exact API that is used for sock map, right? You say you like, here's my start pointer, here's my end pointer. And if you're, if you're smart about your application, if you, if, you, if you really want to optimize things, you always make sure that that end pointer never goes over the end of the scatter gather list because you, you know the layout, right? You can, from the BPF program, you go, what's my layout? I don't want to incur a linearization cost, so I'm always going to chop it off at the end of that list. But if you're like, don't care, or like for some reason you need to get data across the boundary, the API is perfectly fine for you to do that, mm -hmm. and then it will basically fix up the scatter gather list for you. Yeah, and so I, I mentioned like the, one of the important APIs that's missing on this slide is like when you have the pointer, right? Like you technically, ring, uh, Verifier doesn't know like how, how many bytes, but you as an application, you might know that like there is definitely like first hundred bytes that, that, that's yeah. there. Like that's for like uh, ring buff reserve. Like for ring buff reserve, like the typical use case, like for dynamic use case would be, you would have some prefix, right? Which is fixed, it's like some struct that you maintain, right? And the rest will be pre-allocated for some string data. That was like actually the case of, uh, from, from, from you guys, from, from Google, right? Like uh, reading like the environment and all that stuff. So what you would do, you would like pre-calculate how many bytes in total you want, but you only care to directly write into like first 100 bytes. So there will be API that says like, 
give me a direct pointer like for first 100 bytes or null if like there is not enough bytes. So similar approach can be done here. Like if you know the layout yeah. of each buffer, you can like advance it by some amount of bytes and they say like, assume that there are at least 100 linear bytes and then you just work with them, right? And you, you can iterate like that. It's but, kind of complicated still, but. But the, well. that's how the packet stuff works too, right? Because like you, if your application is dumb and writing like a character at a time, I don't care if I am not performant. Like your application is broken. <laughs> but if, so don't you need an end pointer here though too, then to say like where to stop or like a number of bytes? Is it a you pointer? mean for from SKB? Yeah. You pass entire context SKB right now. So like we figure out like everything from that. But that's what, that's what Alexei mentioned. Like we can pass data and data and, but then it will not work for multi-buff. While if you pass the SKB buff or like XDP, MD, you actually know about multi-buff if you want. Right, Mix. Right. so wouldn't that be an API change here to add the XDP pointer plus either length or end of the data? Am I missing something? Because, because okay, so what would from SKB do? Because there's a lot of frags there. It's going to give you a pointer to... What? So like in that, like if you can go back to the yes. previous slide. Yes. Oh, one more. <laughs> so you see this data, right? What it points to depends on like what kind of din pointer yeah. it is, right? Yeah. So for SK buff, we can just point to SK buff, yep. or like XDP, MD, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like size and offset is kind of like local view. So this is kind of inspired by Go slices, right? Like mm -hmm. where you have like original uh, like memory, and then you actually have like limited view of it, like if you want to, right? Mm -hmm. So for this multi buff use case, you would still point to like XDP context basically, and then based on size and offset, you can like extract like the data that you need, right? Work with it, if that makes sense. But, but then, if you walk past the first buffer, if you say like, I wanna no. go whatever, 10 or something, right? And that's past the first buffer. How, how do we know that at runtime? There, there must be a runtime Because check. the data end could be different, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what, what you're I mean. saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it well enough. So but. Pointer does the runtime checks of safety and all that stuff, and like verifier basically trusts those decisions. So like, if you get direct access to data, then there must be some helper that will do all the runtime uh -huh. checks and return you null or non-null. And then in the BPF code, you will need to do null check after that. And if it's not null, then you know like verifier trusts and like it knows that this is valid direct data pointer with some amount of uh -huh. bytes, right? So if you if you had an end pointer as your API, then you wouldn't need runtime checks. Right, because the the um, the verifier could statically verify that your offsets are within that range. Right, but in practice, data and data and are so hard to work with that like this is sort of like alternative to that. Maybe it was like extra runtime check, but might be worse in a lot of cases anyway. Okay. But I mean, like multi buff is like extension of all this. This is like even without multi buff, this is like yeah, very yeah, useful interface to something that we don't know the, the size of up front, right? And like with all the safety and all the stuff, just like put into the runtime. Yeah, I agree. I, I think we're talking about the. And, and we can, we can keep figuring out like multi I I also think like like for the for the S, for the SKB case, what would probably be useful when you don't need to go and linearize your SKB if you don't have enough data in the linear thing, right? We probably would need some read-only pointer where you can then still parse it if you don't plan or intend to modify the packet, but then you can use that as an optimization as well. Yeah. You want to mention like the metadata? About what? So like the size, right, has like, you, you mentioned that like we have an extra eight bits, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, in the size, we also keep track of like whether it's read-only or not. Um, so yeah, I think we'll be able to uh, support that as well. Yeah, like we, we, like we recently went through this refactory. Like Verifier went through, through this refactoring where we had like a sort of generalized specifiers of like what pointers are, like what uh, arguments are, and then like we have this read-only, not read-only, yeah. like uh, extra yeah. modifier. So like it's, it's possible to use it here and like have some helpers that would only accept DIN pointers that are read-only. Yeah. So like you have guaranteed that you're not going to modify whatever you are not yeah. supposed to and verifier will enforce all that, so yeah. It's, it, well, for helpers it does, it's, it, yes. <laughs> but like, 
well, it's not an annotation, but like we do keep track of like where the DIN pointer is in the map, right? So uh, we don't need tags yet for that, but or maybe we, I don't know. We do, we do it by name right now, the same. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Super excited. Finally write the regex parser now. Right? I think the, the one tricky bit, but that's not a problem of upstream, is how to use it for old kernels versus new kernels without having to rewrite too much. But <laughs> Yeah. Core, have few implementations with BPF program, pick one dynamically. I don't, I don't, I don't have any new solution for you here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's pain. All good. <laughs> All right. Any more comments, questions, feedback? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.